One thing we've learned coming here today is that even though this is kind of technically off season and the shuttles aren't running, you still want to get here early because the parking lot fills up. And yeah, we thought we would be early. I mean, for us, we're early. Yeah, for us, we're early. But, you know, we got here, what, 10 30? Mm-hmm. Between 10 30 and 11, as we drove through, most of the parking lots were already full. And we found a spot, a pull off, you know, that was probably a quarter mile from a trailhead. And we parked there and had to walk down the road a little bit. Hopefully, remember where we parked so we can find the truck. I don't think we'll forget. Okay, well, it's usually easy to spot with a big green kayak on the roof. Yep. Yep. That's really the reason Randy puts it up there. Yeah, we, we haven't been kayaking yet, but we put the kayak up there just to find the truck in the parking lots. Right. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Randy and I'm Diane and this is Zephyr's Travels. In this video we wanted to share some tips and tricks to visiting Zion. We have been camped outside of Zion National Park for the past couple of months and we've made a number of trips into the park. We've done a number of the hikes in the park and we want to share with you what we've learned in our experience so this is going to be part one of two parts because there's a lot there to do let's start off with going to the visitor center as you enter the park at the main entrance in springdale you want to be sure to get a map of the park and then you want to park your vehicle and take a visit into the visitor center not every part of the visitor center is currently open but the bookstore is open and that is well worth a visit. There are also park rangers outside the visitor center that will help you with any questions you have about the park itself, camping, uh, hikes that you can take, any other facilities that they might offer. It's one of the first things we always suggest if you're going to a national park is to make a stop at the visitor center, talk to the rangers, and you know just kind of get yourself oriented to what you want to do. And it helps make a plan so that you can get the most out of your visit to the park. On our first visit, we didn't even go into any of the trails. We actually decided to just drive through the park and do that. And Zion is very nice and it's actually got a road it's got two entrances. It's got a south entrance and an east entrance, and there's you know you can take the tr road right through it. It takes you up the edge of the cliffs through some tunnels, and it's very scenic. Yes, it is. We yeah we did that the first time we went into the park. Yeah, and we we really enjoyed it. There's there's plenty of places as you drive through to pull off and stop and take a look, take some pictures. Be careful that you, you only park in designated parking areas. You don't just pull off on the side of the road because the road is fairly narrow. And if you do leave your vehicle unattended on the side of the road, they will ticket. And they say, they do say they actually will tow them. So yeah. you don't want to get into a situation like that. But it is, it's enjoyable drive, you know, going through the tunnels a little, kind of a little hairy because it's pretty dark. There's no lights in the tunnel. And right. There's a couple cutouts. Cutouts, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, the tunnels, I think, are a, one of them is a mile long, and it's got a cutout in the middle, but the rest of it's pretty dark, and they're, they're fairly narrow. Um, they don't recommend you go through with RVs, but you can, and if you do, they do charge extra to escort you through the tunnel, because basically what they will do is they will stop traffic um, from the oncoming direction and give you the center of the tunnel and drive you through. I think they charge $14, $15 for that. Something like, yeah, something like that. And if you just want to ride along there and stop and park your vehicle for a little bit and, you know, observe the, the scenery, the scenery is just awesome. And plenty of picture taking is available. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is a very enjoyable um, path to take or, or drive to take through the park. Yeah, it is. But let's get to the hikes because okay. that's probably what a lot of people come to Zion for. And, and one of the things that I wish that we had had more prep 
to this. We kind of found our way. Luckily, we were here for a while, so we were able to kind of take our time and figure out things. But if you're coming for a shorter period of time, you might not have that opportunity. And so we want to help you a little bit with that. Right. Planning. Planning is a good idea. Yeah, because there's so much to do there. And you want to make sure that you pick the right trail. You know, there'd be nothing worse than to think you got on, you know, the, the most desirable trail to find out is probably one of the most strenuous trails. And you really don't enjoy your time there at the park. So we want to kind of help you understand what each trail is like and how best to enjoy them. The first trail we're going to talk about is the um, Paras Trail. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this one is right off of the Visitor Center. And this is the only trail available in the park that you can take your pets on. Right. And it's also the only trail in the park that allows you to take bicycles. Right. Um, so Keep that in mind when you're walking this trail, you are going to see pets, you're going to see bicycles, and you're going to see a lot of people. The trail zigzags back and forth along the um, Virgin River, and it crosses it multiple times, and it takes you from the visitor center all the way over to the Zion Canyon Scenic Drive. And the trail was actually put in there to help take some of the traffic away from the main road during the summertime when the there's a lot of people at the park and it allows you to get to the uh, Zion Canyon Scenic Drive area, which typically is closed during the summer, um, easier, especially if you have bikes and such. Right. And we took Monty and Zephyr on a hike the one day when it was really nice outside and they seemed to enjoy it. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a good hike for, for taking your dogs. Um, you know, obviously... In national parks, the rule is that your dogs need to be on the pavement and pick up after them. Right. You know, but the one nice thing about this hike is I think every time we've been through this hike, there's always deer. Right. Right. You always are able to see deer off grazing on the grass or whatever. And I'm sure that the deer in this park have gotten used to people being there you can get up pretty close to them if you're quiet and calm. Of course, you can't get right up to them and touch them. And but you wouldn't want to. No, I don't think you would want to. But you do get the chance pretty much anywhere in the park get to see these deer. And they just, you know, they don't really mind the people and they kind of just go along about their business. Yeah, it, it, it is pretty neat. I mean, we've we've been in parts, parts of the park where the deer practically walked right next to you. And we've walked by them on trails and such. And, you know, they don't run off or anything as long as you're quiet and, you know, don't make a lot of noise and, you know, and don't threaten them in any way. They're really good. At the lodge, you can get the Sand Beach Trail. And the Sand Beach Trail travels along the edge of the Virgin River. And during the summertime, it's actually a horse trail where if you're going to go horseback riding, that's where they would take you. But um, during the wintertime when the horses aren't um, out and being used, you can actually walk this trail quite easily. And it's listed as a moderate trail, but it really was pretty easy. There was a little bit of elevation uh, change. It's not paved. It's mostly sand. Um, but we did get to walk by deer grazing right off the trail mm -hmm. and it was a nice walk it's it's very comfortable i suspect in the summertime it would be very warm yes. because you're at low elevation there yes. and in the sun but it was a real comfortable easy yeah. walk to do and it's it's a down and back trail um let's see what it is it's, well the whole trail is seven and a half miles we did not do seven and a half miles we just did a portion of it right um, yeah so again, that's probably based off you don't want to ride that on a horse for seven and a half miles, not walk it. But for walking, it was it's an easy and comfortable walk to take. What'd you think? Yeah, for that was our first hike. Yep. And yeah, it was it wasn't pretty easy. I mean, it was a little up and down, sometimes a little rocky. But yeah, and like you say, it was interesting. It was the first time being our first hike that we came across the deer in the park. So we're gonna do Watchman Trail, which is this way. It's two hours, 3.3 miles, and has an elevation change of 368 feet. Ready for today's hike? Yep, ready. Okay. Right, I think we're seeing wildlife. 
Well, we already saw some deer. Oh, look, like, see it? Straight ahead? Oh, up in the trees there, yeah, there's yeah. a deer. I won't be able to really see it on the camera, but it's right up in that area. <laughs> huh? That question wasn't even planned. Yeah. <laughs> I just decided, oh, let's see for some wild. We heard. Yeah. Just around the, around the corner. He's awesome. Oh, cool. Have a good day. You, you too. too. <laughs> There's a, a ram right there on the trail. We were told to expect to see him by a couple people we passed by. Well, we made it to the end of the trail. Or essentially the halfway point because we got to go the trail back right right <laughs> you go on a trail you go to one end and then you got to turn around and go back yeah unless you have a loop trail right but it's worth the hike i mean the views up here are fantastic right it was it, it said it was a moderate trail moderate in difficulty and it, it was a little bit there's a lot more it's all uphill yeah it's all uphill and it's a lot more rocks than the first hike that we went on right but well, it certainly was well worth it the scenery was is gorgeous you can see miles and miles yeah and we did see sheep yeah and a ram a ram who posed very nicely for our pictures right and uh, we saw some ice a lot of the trail is in the sunshine. There are a few spots where it does get a bit chilly. And like I say, we did see some ice. So Yeah, and we're lucky the trail wasn't too busy today. I imagine it could be pretty busy at other times. Oh yeah, during holidays, probably more so in on summer. the weekends. In the summer. Um probably in the summer, although for me myself I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come here during the summer? I would enjoy it. it mm. I believe in this part of Utah it does get extremely hot in the yeah. summer months so be sure if you do come on this trail to bring plenty of fluids to drink right even even this time of year right it's good to have something to drink right it's good to have something to drink yeah so yep well I guess we got to turn around and take the trail back down head, so. head back down the trail yep so. all right we'll see you at the bottom that trail again leaves at the visitor center just off of the oversized vehicle parking lot and it takes you up to the top of the watchman mountain i think it's called but it, it will actually gives you a great view of um springdale and the valley below right. the campground and the visitor center it 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 is well worth it because it has a great ending to it when you get to the top of the mountain and you have that great view the the best part of that trail for me was when we saw the ram right right there's a there's a portion of the trail where there's this very very large rock up in the uh, above the trail and for quite a bit of the time when we walked through there there was this ram just watching everybody walk right. through right and again if you were quiet and not made too much noise you could get some great pictures and 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 see that it was really kind of cool yeah yeah i mean he just he kind of just stood there you know when you first look at him it was like is it real because he was so still yeah you try and look at him and see and then once in a while you could see his eyes move and then a couple of times he did move his position yeah but he came back yeah because yeah. he walked off when we going up he walked off his position but when we came back he was there yeah. again and you know people were telling us about him 
as we were coming up the hill, mm -hmm. and we were telling people as we went down. Right, right. <laughs> to be sure to look <laughs> up and see them. Yeah. yeah. One one nice thing I thought about that trail was that it, it's in the sun for most of it. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're again, you're you're zigzagging up through a canyon along, you know, and there's a fair number of switchbacks and such. But there's very little of it that you're in the shadow of the mountain. Most of the time, you're in the sun. So especially for a day, days like we had where it was in the winter time, the sun felt really good and made it very comfortable. Right. You can get into the shaded side for a little bit of it, and you got to be careful because you can get some ice in some areas on that trail. Right. That's one thing we found about being in Utah in December and January. The temperatures really have not been too bad during the day. And on a sunny day, which there has been many, um, it feels pretty warm. Now, they tell you in the um, uh, guide that this trail will take about two hours. That's probably true if you're 20 to 30 years old and in great shape. <laughs> um, if you're more like us, figure two and a half, three hours for this hike. You know, you're going to want to take your time. You're not going to want to rush it. You know, we never felt tired and and, and really pushed no. on this trail. So, but we took our time and enjoyed the, the hike. And so it took us probably closer to three hours right. for that. And it was enjoyable. Right. And on any hike, it's recommended that you bring plenty of water. Yep. And also on the more strenuous hikes, you want to be sure that, you know, you're not hungry when you go. And if you do bring food bring salty food which helps you to retain the water or whatever you drink right and we're getting more into that in part two because we made those mistakes right yeah no we brought water but yeah, yeah. we did bring water we always brought water mm -hmm. but we made some of the other mistakes right. those are the hikes that we are going to share in part one um we have more that we're going to do in part two and so definitely you know subscribe to the channel and hit the notification so when we post part two it won't be it will be fairly soon probably in the next week um but there's a lot more to um the trails in in, in zion national park that we want to talk about in, in that episode right. and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and leave us any comments that you would like to send us below tell us about your if you've been to zion what was your favorite hike and what time of year did you come and you know just tell us about your experience we'd love to hear about that so leave us a comment and we will see you in the next video i guess yep we'll see you in part two yep bye everybody bye all right so we're starting out at the grotto here and we're going to take this western trail along like this and we're not this is angel's landing like i was telling you Oh, yeah. Very narrow, and we probably won't go that far. But we'll take this place to Sweat Stream Trail and check that out. So, ready? Really? <laughs> Warning steep cliffs. Well, there's steep cliffs everywhere.